right. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us at Warning the Lukewarm Ministries. I have Mr. Alan Manson of My Gospel here, Hello. and he's from Australia. He's going to introduce uh, another topic that we're discussing. It's called the Dispensation and the Rapture, I believe. Correct, Alan? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Very good. And... Um, it's about seven pages. It'll be about an hour long. And if you want to contact us, um, I'll, my email is turn to Jesus today at gmail.com. Very easy. Uh, or you can contact me at YouTube or Facebook. And just introduce yourself, Alan, and let us know a little bit about your ministry and then uh, go from there. Thanks for being here. Very good. Okay, well, thank you, Greg, for that introduction and, and welcome, everyone. Um, my ministry is to promote the Apostle Paul's gospel. Um, there are two gospels that Christians need to abide by. Um, the first one is the gospel of Jesus Christ, which aims to save sinners out of uh, Satan's kingdom and into Christ's kingdom through the gospel message uh, related to the blood of Jesus and the price that he paid to save sinners out of Satan's kingdom. And then people, Christians, uh, need to then progress from there to, um, uh, to become perfect as God the Father is perfect. And the gospel of the Apostle Paul that he calls my gospel, is, if obeyed, will uh, uh, in, enable a person to become as perfect as God the Father is perfect. So we can't describe that, uh, what uh, some of those aspects might uh, perceive to be, but they are there, and if uh, people abide by the scriptures, they will attain salvation. So that's my ministry. And today, because I um, frequent of various Bible discussion groups on Facebook, um, I found that there is some confusion regarding the dispensations and how they uh, act and how God uses them. So this is what we're going to discuss today. So I'll just switch over to the Bible study. I found through being involved in various Bible discussion groups on Facebook that the majority of Christians are unaware of the dispensations referred to in the Bible. And in Ephesians verse one, uh, chapter 1, verse 10, it says that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he, meaning God, might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So there are dispensations that God is going to take out of these dispensations, those who have met his requirements for obedience. So here we see in the above verses that the Apostle Paul says that there are various periods of time that are each characterised as a dispensation. So a dispensation is a period of time when God deals differently with mankind, showing how he has in the past interacted with humanity in various ways. Mm -hmm. As shown by chart to the right, or below, there are seven dispensations of time covering 7,000 years, which are sandwiched in between eternity past and eternity future. Now, that's a statement from this uh, link that relates to this um, illustration. So we have here these seven dispensations. The first one is innocence, meaning Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. We've got conscious, uh, the, the people were relying on their consciousness to relate to God. This is generally regarded as the, the before the flood. Um, so then you've got the flood um, with the rainbow where God mm -hmm. gives a covenant that he will not uh, cover the earth in water ever again. And it follows on with human government. Um, then we have the promises. Um, we have the law here, which is the law of Moses and the Jews leading up to uh, Christ's death on the cross. Uh, Christ's death on the cross then commenced the church period and this number seven re relates to the kingdom age when Jesus Christ is ruling from Jerusalem for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. So that's a very quick thumbnail sketch of those dispensations. 
So I created this uh, drawing here, a little illustration to show some of those um, it's a little bit, little bit more detail on what was shown there. So we've got Adam and Eve here and some some times that show how many years there were to um, Noah's Ark. There was 1,656 years and there was 886 years to the Ten Commandments being given. So we have God the Son here, we have God the Father in the middle and we have God the Holy Spirit on this side, so that's how they reflect that symbolism. Yeah. Uh, the Ten Commandments were, were given, and these were to save the Jews. So God required an obedience to uh, all of those commandments. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end, of, at the end of the period, well, towards the end of the period, Jesus came down. Uh, he spent a lifetime on the earth. He was then crucified on the cross. And he ascended back to heaven to be with the Father. And then um, during this gap here, I've got 50 days. So this is the period between the uh, ascension of Christ, if you like, into heaven and Pentecost. Uh, the Holy Spirit came down in Acts 2. And mm. you end up with the commencement of the church and the Gentiles. And the Bible, of course, is focused on here, the scriptures now, at the end of this, there is the rapture of those who are dead in Christ and we who remain and are alive, and we end up uh, going to join our Heavenly Father. And then after the tribulation has uh, run its term on earth, which is seven years, which is two times 1,260 days, mm -hmm. uh, split in the middle, um, we have Jesus who is the faithful and true um, son of God. He comes down to claim his kingdom. And this is where we have the 1,000 years um, of uh, his reign on earth. And at the end of that, where um, Satan is released and um, there's a rebellion and then all of those who rebelled are burnt up with fire. Mm -hmm. We then have Jesus handing the kingdom over or the earth over to God the Father and it becomes the new heavens and the new earth and we have mm -hmm. the new Jerusalem that comes down. So that essentially is um, an overview of the, the various dispensations that, we, that are real, the, the really important ones. Yeah. But the, another aspect of it is, that it is obedience is required by God before formal laws were instituted. So this was man's conscience that was being uh, tested. God wanted to know really what he was made of. In these other ones here, under the law and under grace, obedience is required by God from his people to obey his command requirements or commandments in faith. Failure to comply means exclusion from the kingdom for eternity. Mm -hmm. That's stated in Hebrews 3, in other words of course. Yeah. Um, here, I've got obedience is required to Jesus and his saints on earth. Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords to ultimately present back to the Father the perfected earth and its creation. So everything, the, the message that this ch chart, if you like, or this illustration is to reflect obedience by God's people back to God through his word. Mm -hmm. A message. So, just to look at the dispensation of innocence as an example of how a dispensation works, Adam and Eve lived in a dispensation of time, which had a beginning and an end to this unknown period. I say unknown because we don't know how long anything uh, lasted for while it, in their in their time in the Garden of Eden. Right. So I've, I've got a beginning here where Adam was created out of the dust of the earth and God breathed uh, life into his nostrils. And then, of course, Eve followed. And then, of course, Eve entertained a discussion in the garden with the serpent. And then uh, he um, ha had her enticed and then she enticed her husband and then they were finally judged. So that really is a pictorial illustration of that uh, dispensation. Mm -hmm. So each dispensation is said to follow a pattern in that it commences in the best state possible and ends in God's judgment. So that's the best state possible and this is the judgment. 
Each dispensation requires those who live on earth in the period they are living in to obey whatever God's command or whatever God commands them to do in that dispensation. In the dispensation of innocence shown above and following, every dispensation has the same characteristics as shown below in the bold. So this is all in here. All of these dispensations uh, have the same uh, requirements. Mm. So under this, um, Adam and Eve were the two people under God's testing. The time period was to command to not eat of the fruit of the tree. That's all they had to do. Yeah. And 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 that and the time period lasted from that point. That was the commencement point, and Adam's eventual disobedience. Once he disobeyed, then God brought along His judgment. Yeah. Uh, responsibility of God's people was to never eat of the fruit of forbidden tree. The failure of God's people was firstly listening to a voice other than God's literal words. Um, in their failure to obey God's voice, Eve listened directly to Satan's voice and Adam listened to his wife's voice. Mm -hmm. And in uh, 1 Timothy 2, it says, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived by Satan's words was in the transgression. So, they were, so with God's judgment from this, uh, they were both cursed from him and destined for eternal death. Uh, there are some writers who say that um, Adam will live again. He'll be resurrected and spend time with God, but that, that is not the case. Mm. So there are a total of... So in dispensational law, we're moving on now from Adam and Eve to the law of Moses. Uh, there are a total of 613 Jewish commandments contained within the Bible's Old Testament. If a Jewish man or woman broke any of these commandments, there was a penalty to be paid once the sin was discovered. Some of these commands, such as adultery, fornication and murder, required the death penalty to be invoked. The penalty by, was by stoning of the community, and this was required to be implemented within each uh, Jewish community. That's stated there in Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. So... God required each such extreme punishment to become an example to anyone else who may be contemplating sinning in the same manner. It was also aimed to remove sin from amongst God's people and therefore reflect a degree of holiness throughout the communities. So using the above uh, headings, uh, as we did with Adam and Eve, those who are under God's testing in this dispensation were all Jewish descendants from Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, plus any foreigners who chose to become Jews. The time period uh, commenced when the law was given by God to Moses on Mount Sinai and it ended at Christ's death upon the cross. Mm -hmm. The responsibility of God's people is to obey and enforce the law of Moses throughout the generation's while the law was invoked. Uh, the failure of God's people, in the time of Christ, the Levitical priesthood had corrupted Moses' laws. And this is where Jesus went into the temple and, and he uh, cast the uh, money changers out and he said, uh, my father's house is a, a house of prayer and you've made it a, a den of thieves. So this is how they had corrupted uh, the laws of Moses. And that was only one aspect. Uh, God's judgment upon the Jews, uh, the Jews at Christ's trial by Pilate brought a curse upon themselves and their descendants that continues today. And in that they said, let the blood of this man be upon us and the heads of our children. And this is why it also says in the scriptures um, that when Moses is read, there is a veil over their heart. Um, so it, they can't accept Jesus because they've got this veil over their heart mm -hmm. and uh, they, they just want Moses' laws. They don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ. Yeah. So if we leave that dispensation behind, we just have a look at the dispensation of grace. Um, so 50 days after Christ descended into heaven, this is a Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended upon those in the upper room. That's stated in Acts 2. Uh, to commence the spiritual creation of the body of Christ on earth 
made up of many born-again members, and that is stated there in 1 Corinthians 12. The scriptures in 1 Corinthians 12, these are the few verses onwards, speak of the various ministries that God requires to be functioning within the body of Christ as highlighted in the illustration below. So we have here from 1 Corinthians 12, a nose ministry, an eye ministry, ear, hand and foot ministry. These are mentioned in the scriptures, but there are other ministries also within the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. This spiritual body of believers has been collectively known in the scriptures as the church, as stated below. And then it says in Matthew 18, 17, And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen and a publican. So that's talking about a man who continually sins within the church and the church is supposed to deal with that sinner in an appropriate way according to the Bible. Right. So instead of the church remaining spiritual in nature and endeavouring to know and to do God the Father's will, as Jesus said in in Matthew 12, 50, he says, uh, whosoever shall do the will of my Father in heaven, the same is my brother, my sister and my mother meaning that they are a family member of of God in heaven. So knowing and doing God the Father's will is vital to um, salvation. Mm -hmm. However, today's church has been hijacked by Satan's ministers of righteousness in the pulpits, and that's that's what Paul calls them in 2 Corinthians 11. These people have since transformed the body of Christ into social clubs. Mm-hmm. So so let's have a look at the testing that God's looking at under the dispensation of grace. So those undergone God's testing are all Jewish and Gentile believers in Jesus Christ who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour by their confession from Romans 10, 9 and 10. So the time period it commenced from the Holy Spirit's descent upon Christ's disciples at Pentecost until the rapture of the true, uh, dead and alive in Christ at the forthcoming rapture. So that that event will end this period. And I will say that that ending point is not very far away today. Mm -hmm. So the responsibility of God's people, so this is the Christians over the past 2,000 years, so their responsibility is to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ and the first part is to stop sinning entirely because no sinner will in, enter into heaven at all. All sinners yeah. are destined for the lake of fire. And it says, and to obey the Apostle Paul's gospel and therefore achieve perfection in this life, which is required for entry into heaven when one dies. Right. So that is that is in the scriptures, you could say. It's not there plainly, but it's there. Mm-hmm. So the failure of God's people, so this is the failure of Christians today, is to obey, or they failed to obey the uh, gospel. Oh, sorry, they have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. and uh, But, you know, the, the false gospel of once saved, always saved, um, tends to make everything obscure and... Mm-hmm. And so what we have here is the failure of Christians to obey Paul's gospel, which means most Christians today will not attain eternal life with Christ because they've only done half the job. They've they've only believed in the gospel of Jesus Christ associated with sin, but they haven't gone on to perfection. And it says here in Romans 10, 16, but they, meaning the Christians in today's churches, have not all obeyed the Apostle Paul's gospel. For Isaiah 53 saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? And I say, well, I I share a lot of this with uh, Christians and they don't believe what I say. They just move on. So the aspect of God's judgment in this dispensation, so the Apostle Paul states categorically that to be carnally minded, meaning to have a club mentality when attending church 
is to become an enemy of God. And that's that's stated clearly in Romans 8, verse 7. Yeah. And here, the verse before, it says to be carnally minded means to be relig- religiously minded, which is the opposite of being spiritually minded. Mm-hmm. So any Christian who has chosen to become religiously minded demonstrates they have hardened their heart towards God and his words. This indicates they prefer the words of men such as Spurgeon or words of women such as Alan White instead of God's words. And there are lots of other men and women besides. Now, this indicates that such people have embraced it and promoted heresies, which the Bible says are works of the flesh. In this, the Bible says that they, meaning Christians in the churches, which do such thing, meaning entertain heresies that contradict what the scriptures say, Mm -hmm. they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So I suggest everyone read those verses in Galatians 5. Now, we move on here to, well, it's it's similar in the church age or the age of grace that we're in. I just want to explain this a, a bit further. So in the illustration below, it could be said that the church age has existed over the past 2,000 years or more. It had its beginnings in the upper room where 120 souls waited for the Holy Spirit to descend upon them. Uh, once evidenced by the tongues of fire upon their heads, as stated in Acts 2, such a spiritual baptism enabled the disciples to perform many miracles. Some of those are explained there, many of which replicated those that Jesus Christ performed when he walked upon the earth. So it is recorded in scripture that some 300 souls were added to the church just in one day, stated in Acts 2. It is also recorded that many in this church sold their houses and lands and brought the proceeds of their former wealth and laid them at the apostles' feet to help fund the needs of those coming into the church. Mm -hmm. Christianity today has arrived at the point on the illustration below where it indicates today. So now we're we're at this point here, uh, we've got the word today. So with the world events occurring in recent years where corruption of government and the sexualisation of children fulfils the term beginning of sorrow stated by Jesus in Matthew 24, this especially applies to Israel because Israel is the centre of debauchery amongst the LGBTQ community in the Middle East. And so um, here we've got the dispensation of grace or the church age um and um so we've got christ on the cross this two thousand years and we're here today um this is daniel's 70th week (laughs) which is made up now i can move that off there so it's divided into what i've termed i've read it elsewhere but it's termed the lesser tribulation and the greater tribulation Mm. It's a period uh, of 1,260 days here and another period of 1,260 days there. And in the middle of the the two, the seven-year period of three and a half years, we have the Antichrist. He makes a peace covenant with Israel at the beginning. It's a seven-year peace covenant, but in the middle of the uh, period, He breaks the covenant. He puts in the abomination of desolation on the altar. Mm -hmm. Um, He demands that everybody worships him as God. And uh, this begins the uh, tribulation, the greater tribulation period. Uh, During this seven year period, you not only got um, the Antichrist um, inflicting a lot of uh, pain and suffering and and a lot of death and destruction on on the earth, but we also have a 21 judgments from God coming down from heaven on the inhabitants of the earth in those days. So we have the seven seal judgments, mm-hmm. we have the seven trumpet judgments, and we have the seven golden vial or bowl judgments. During this period here, the, for the lesser tribulation, we have the 144,000 Jewish men who are virgins. Um, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Jews in Israel. 
And at the end of this period, it says that this man-child is raptured up to heaven. Mm -hmm. And so they disappear after they've done their job. And then the two witnesses uh, who are believed to be Enoch and Elijah, because both men have been in heaven as the two olive branches um, uh, relating to God. Their hearts and their blood in their bodies has been circulating uh, for all these thousands of years, uh, particularly Enoch. Um, he's been kept alive to come back to the earth as, you know, both men are the two witnesses. They're going to do lots of miracles on the earth here uh, to try and uh, save the Jewish people from themselves and their unbelief. Yeah. Um, the fire is going to come out of their mouth and destroy anyone who tries to hurt them. But yeah. at the end, the the religious Jews and the um uh, they will line up with the Antichrist and they will kill these two men. Now, once yeah. their bodies lie in the streets for three and a half days, the Spirit of God will enter into them and they will have resurrected and then they will ascend up to heaven again. Mm -hmm. And this will be this end of the tribulation period. So then I've got um, uh, some times that I've got been able to get from Daniel 12 and Daniel 8 that explains these periods. So we have a 30-day period where the armies of the world gather together at, um, uh, in the Valley of Megiddo for the Battle at Armageddon. Uh, the battle will last for 45 days. Uh, Christ will then come back when Israel is being overwhelmed by its enemies. Uh, he will destroy all these men. It talks about the blood um, uh, of the men slaughtered uh, will fill the valley of Megiddo up to a height of the horses' bridles. And um, after this victory, um, it'll be 965 days while Christ establishes everything on earth. So I've covered a little bit of this here, so I won't go into it anymore, but um, it says there, um, hang on, let's get rid of that. So I believe that the world has progressed in, in this past year beyond the beginning of sorrows point, uh, point. It's the beginning of sorrows point to now appear at the end of this period. This is where World War Three and the Psalm 83 war and the appearance of the Antichrist are very close indeed. In the illustration that follows, the marker indicated by the word today indicates where we are in prophetic time as shown on the timeline. So this is the um, illustration I bring to your attention. Mm -hmm. So we've got another today here. This is uh, getting closer all the time. So at the vertical dotted line that's here, uh, where the end of the church age and the start of the tribulation is shown, it could be said that the dispensation of the church age will have come to an end. This point will occur when the ongoing conflicts throughout the world are brought to an end by the Antichrist becoming the world's peacemaker. Mm -hmm. These conflicts are between Israel and its Arab neighbours. So this is Iran, Yemen, Lebanon, Hamas and Iraq's getting involved as well. So mm -hmm. this will be the Psalm 83 war. World War Three, so we're looking at uh, Ukraine, Russia and NATO. And then, of course, we've got domestic uprising. Um, we can see that in the United Kingdom at the moment, um, and that's based on immigration issues and especially involving Islam, where there's two-tiered policing uh, taking place in the United Kingdom. Mm. Now, this all happened throughout all Western countries. Uh, so I've got the US. Canada, UK, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa. Um, so these, these three um, features will happen all around the world so that the Antichrist can walk in and say that all of this has got to stop and everyone will say, who is like unto this man? Mm. So some could argue that there could be a dispensation of the tribulation. Some do say it's a dispensation, others say it's not. So if this uh, claim is accepted, then the following definition would apply. So again, 
we look at the same headings. Those under God's testing in the tribulation are all Jewish people located in Israel. Now you've got to remember that the rapture has occurred. So the church, the true church, has left the earth and is with uh, their creator and, and saviour, Jesus Christ. Mm. Um, the people who have been left and the Christians who have been left are treated as no different as unsaved people. So if we have a, I'll just give a brief description of what this is. So we have the parable of the wise and the foolish virgins um, that a lot of Christians ignore. Um, in that, in that, there's, in Revelation 13, it says, um, who is wise? Let him add up or count up the number of the name of the beast. And the number is 666. So we're going to have wise virgins on the earth in the church who are able to add up the number of the beast. And that's the only mm -hmm. way that you'll be able to tell that this is the son of perdition. So the wise virgins are going to be able to do that. The foolish virgins will begin to wake up, but it's all going to become a little too late for them. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> when they're, they're adding up and they're putting out the what's called the midnight cry, this midnight cry in Matthew 25, 6, is indicating that uh, the wise virgins are saying, this man is the son of Satan. You can't trust him. Um, you know, beware. The rapture's near. Get yourselves ready, that type of thing. So this will be the midnight cry. And, mm -hmm. of course, God the Father's looking at all of this that's going on in the church and in the world, but he's mostly focused on that. So here I've got the wise virgins showing them as a block in a relationship of time along here. Uh, this time period could be in days or weeks, but it wouldn't be in much more. But um, this is an unknown period. Jesus said um, that he doesn't know the day or the hour that he, you know, he will come back um, in the rapture to collect his body of Christ or the church. Um, mm -hmm. So this unknown period is determined by God, by what's happening here on the earth with the wise virgins. And once everything uh, has fallen into place, then the dead in Christ rise first. So this mm -hmm. is the wise virgins and the dead in Christ who are in their graves. So mm -hmm. They are then raptured into heaven in their new resurrected bodies like Christ's. And then there's a, another unknown period down here. Now this could be uh, moments. It could be in the twinkling of an eye. But I believe the twinkling of an eye here is the changing of our mortal bodies into immortal bodies in 1 Corinthians 15. Mm -hmm. And then and then the, we who are alive and remain are caught up together with them in the clouds and so shall we ever be with the Lord. <clears throat> so this is the, 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 um, the, these are the events that are in the Bible. Nobody can put a time or a date on them, but they're there mm -hmm. and they're event driven. However, for the Christians who are being left behind, and you can read about that in Luke um, 13, um, these are the Christians who will be crying out, Lord, Lord, open unto us. Haven't we done many mighty works? Haven't we cast out devils in thy name? And Jesus says, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye have worked, who have worked iniquity. Mm. And so these are, are pondering what they've got to do. Now, th th this is where Christians will be persecuted and beheadings will commence. So this is the only way that the false church today, after it's been woken up during this period, and they realise that the rapture was real and they should have prepared themselves, um, this is where the beheadings commence. Yes. So uh, that's what this illustration reflects. So um, if we look down here under... Those under God's testing are all Jewish people located in Israel. So the church is gone. There's, not, there's not, nothing more to do with the church. The time period uh, of the tribulation begins from the signing of the peace covenant with Israel and its Arab neighbours by the Antichrist. Now, we've got to remember that um, the, the, Daniel's 70 weeks is 490 weeks, Okay. And if we remove seven of them, we get 483 weeks. 
Now, 483 weeks ended ended back here. Um, where was it? Hang on, did I put it here? Yeah, it's here. So 483 weeks ended here. We need to fill up the last seven years. So what's happened is the prophetic clock that in, uh, mentioned that 490 weeks were needed to purify the Jews from their sins and cleanse them from all unrighteousness. It, it only 483 um, had finished by the time Christ was murdered on the cross. So mm. the prophetic clock was held from ticking any further. So once the Antichrist is identified by him signing the peace covenant with Israel, that will then start that prophetic clock ticking again at this start point. And it will tick off another seven years or two lots of 1260 days before that event will then finish for 490 years. So that means that the Jews will then um, have been tested and purified. So all Jewish, uh, whoops, have I got that here? Sorry, right, there we go. So it relates, to the tribulation relates to all Jewish people located in Israel. And if anybody hears anyone saying that Christians are going to go through the tribulation and get out the other side and everything's going to be fine and dandy, well, you've been told a lie. Mm -hmm. So from the signing of the peace covenant with Israel and its Arab neighbours by the Antichrist to the resurrection and the ascension of the two witnesses, which occurs uh, two times 1260 days. So that's the time period. That's the beginning and the end of the tribulation period, the, the two events that uh, signify that period. So mm -hmm. there's a responsibility of God's people during this. So this is for the Jew. So for each Jew, to his, his responsibility is to accept Jesus Christ as his or her personal saviour as preached initially by the 144,000 Jewish men and later by the two witnesses um, to the Jewish people. Now, these Jewish converts must then evangelise other Jewish people and suffer the consequences for doing so. And here in Luke 6, 22, Jesus said, and I believe this more uh, rel relates to the Jews, blessed are ye when Jewish religious men shall hate you. And you, if you need to do some research about how the religious Jews in Israel hate Christians and what they do to them. They spit on them and they do all sorts of things. Right. And so, and when they shall also separate you from their company and shall reproach you and they'll cast out your name of evil for the Son of Man's sake. So the Son of Man is looking at how Jews will try and witness to other Jews and what will be their reaction. So the failure of God's people is to compromise the true gospel and corrupt it in much the same way as the church today has corrupted the gospel. So that'll happen in the tribulation as well. And mm. God's judgment will occur when the religious Jews uh, join forces with the Antichrist and become the dominant religious group at the end of this 2,520 day, which is two lots of 1260 days or seven Jewish year period. The end event occurs with the murdering of the two witnesses, just like they murdered Jesus Christ. They're going to murder these two witnesses, followed by their resurrection and their ascension into heaven. So that is the end uh, event for the tribulation period. So following the ascension of the two witnesses into heaven, there are periods of time mentioned in the book of Daniel that indicates when other events happen. So I have described these before. Um, so feel free to go back and look up some of these scripture verses. So <clears throat> we have, um, I've, I've highlighted here the Battle of Armageddon when that occurs. Uh, the Battle of 45 days anyway. <laughs> Um, Jesus Christ re returns to the earth at his second coming to wage war on his enemies at Armageddon. That's that area there. And during the 965-day period, um, that's this one here, uh, Jesus places Satan into the bottomless pit for a 1,000 years. He casts the Antichrist and the false prophet into the lake of fire forever. He separates the sheep from the goat nations. 
And those people living in the goat nations are then cast into the lake of fire. Mm. Uh, Jesus allocates kingdoms on earth to his saints as their rewards for good and faithful servant, being service rather. And he also establishes his millennial temple and throne in Jerusalem to mm. commence the millennial reign. So after all that, this completes the study on what represents the dispensations and the obligations of God's people that they must abide by to obey God's word throughout these periods. Mm -hmm. So praise the Lord, who wants to receive a crown from Jesus Christ placed that he places upon their heads uh, for good and faithful service. So that's what I'm aiming for, and I hope you are too. I'll put my head up to that too. <laughs> Praise the Lord, Greg. Yeah, that's good. Um, so we might end it there. This has um, been an interesting study that I've put forward uh, or put together. I'll mm -hmm. just go back up to the top. And um, if anyone has any questions, they can go to mygospel.info. Um, I have a contact page there. Um, and if there are any questions, we may well. Uh, do a, a video similar to this with uh, at, with the questions attached at the bottom. We'll use the uh, illustrations that are here to provide answers. And the aim is, is to try and get people um, to agree on what is the truth here in the scriptures and what, uh, and what has been presented so that we can all speak uh, and, or believe and speak the same thing to others. Yeah, right? oh, I and love then, it. I I like your uh, diagrams. You must have been an engineer or something. You, <laughs> yes. They're very detailed. They're very good. You yes. must have been doing presentations or something in the past, but uh, yes. I really I really enjoy those. So you have to send me a copy of that so I can look at it. I will. I will. The only two, please, Greg. And if anybody else wants a copy of this, um, please contact me uh, via my website. Um, would be more than happy to share these uh, diagrams and and documents with you. Yeah. Okay, all right. We'll we'll call it a day, Greg, and we'll look forward to hearing from anyone who's tuned into us. All right, appreciate it. And you can contact me on Facebook, Greg Waterhour, or turn to Jesus Today at Gmail dot com or on YouTube. So appreciate everybody joining us. Okay. God bless you all, and thank you for uh, taking the time to view us. Yeah, God bless. Thank you.